is going on, everybody out there? Podcast listeners, through hikers, day hikers, section hikers, hiker hikers. Anyways, welcome to episode number five of Trail Tales. Super stoked to bring you this conversation I had today with my new friend, Scott Hughes. Scott is the show's very first southbound Appalachian Trail through hiker. And we talk all about that, the differences between a northbound and a southbound through hike. We talk about how, unlike our previous guest, Scott did the no stove cold soak thing for his food, and it actually worked out pretty well for him. And we even get into yet another sketchy bear encounter story that Scott had while he was hiking through Shenandoah National Park. We're going to get into the episode in just a second here, but first, I need to plug my social media and email account. So, let's say you're listening to the show, you think I say something stupid, maybe I said something wrong, something factual, I don't fucking know. Maybe I said something, or a guest said something, it's not all about me after all, that resonated with you, something noteworthy, and you want to let me know. You can do that. You can send me an email, trailtalespod at gmail.com. You can also contact me on Twitter and Instagram at trailtalespod, and I just made a Facebook account as well. I haven't fucking posted anything on it yet, but... I'm going to get around to it, so Facebook is now a thing for the show as well. So yeah, I don't know, fucking tell me what's good, if you like something I'm doing, if you don't like something I'm doing, if you've got any suggestions for how I can make the show better, any suggestions for trails or certain guests you'd like me to talk to, I'd love to hear from you. Also, I want to say that if you like the show, if you enjoy what you're hearing, and you want to do me a solid... The way you can do that is leave me a five-star review on iTunes or whatever your podcast streaming platform is. It would really help me. It'll rank the show higher the more five-star reviews I get, which will help expose more people to the show and make me rich and famous. I also should say that it is worthwhile to subscribe to the show on iTunes or, again, whatever your podcast streaming platform is, so that way... Every new episode I post, I'm trying to post one once a week, usually on Tuesday. Not usually, always on Tuesday. Got to be consistent. Um, Yeah, so if you want to subscribe, you'll get all the new episodes as soon as they come out. It'll be fucking chill because, you know, I'm just so fucking chill and so are my guests. I would even say they're even more chill than I am. Just saying a lot because I'm pretty fucking chill. Anyways, that's enough BS. Let's get into it. Episode number five of Trail Tales with Scott Hughes southbound Appalachian Trail class of 2018. And we are recording. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number five of Trail Tales. I'm your host, Kyle O'Grady, and today I am joined by my new friend, Scott Hughes. That's how you pronounce your name, right? I probably shouldn't fuck that up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right from the beginning. Didn't want to fuck that up too bad. All right, cool. Scott Hughes. I guess it's an easy name to pronounce, so I don't know why I was... I meant to ask you before we started recording, but fuck it. So Scott is our very first southbound Appalachian Trail through hiker on the show. So I guess to start off, dude, I just got to ask, why did you decide to hike the trail the wrong way? Oh, man, dude. So or die, man. Uh... At least you own it. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Just like... uh... For me, it was like a timing thing. Uh, it was a bit easier to like leave in June. Um, financially, just like saving up the money for it. A little bit of extra time, yeah. Yeah, uh, and that's about it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, really, just easier to leave in June. I also wanted to avoid the crowds too. Like, like nothing against no bows or anything, but like it just seemed a bit too crowded for me, and I just kind of like wanted to be alone at some points. Makes makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about your southbound hike in a second, but first I kind of want to take a step back. I want to ask you, how did you learn about the trail in the first place? You know, what was your prior hiking experience? And after you learned about the trail, what was it that put you over the edge and made you decide you wanted to do this fucking insane, crazy long hike, walk, whatever you want to call it. What made you want to go on this adventure? Yeah. Oh dude. Uh, so I just remember my dad like talking about the AT as a like when I was a kid, and I just pictured it literally like a bike path because that's the only trails I'd ever hiked then. 
with just a bunch of families just hiking to Georgia. And so I told my dad, I'd like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll do the AT with you. And then, like, as I got older, I, like, read the Bill Bryce and the Walk in the Woods book and pretty amped on it. I don't know. I was always a big, big backpacker. Um, I'm from Michigan, so I've done a lot of the Michigan backpacking. And then after I graduated high school, I uh, did a road trip out west and backpacked all out west and the national parks there and just kind of been a passion of mine for a long time. And kind of the natural progression was to, I guess, through hike. Cool, cool. Um, what were some of the trails? I'm, I'm really not familiar with Michigan at all as far as the uh, the hiking and backpacking goes there. Uh, what were some of the hikes you had done there before? I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing crazy, like no mountains, but we have like pictured rocks and act- uh, National Lake Shore, which is pretty dope. Uh, along Lake Superior, there's some dope rocks. <laughs> um, and then like there's the Porkies in the UP as well, the Upper Peninsula, um, which is the closest thing Michigan has to mountains. And then just a few other stuff, like we've got some cool like beach camping um, on the dunes, like Michigan's got some dope dunes, and dope I don't know, just dunes. like, yeah man, uh, but yeah, I don't just like getting out, and we've got a lot of woods and stuff, so nothing like crazy, but just getting out and hanging out with the boys, doing some fishing and whatnot. It was, it was really weird. I know for the first half of my through hike, I'm pretty sure the state that I met the most people from was actually Michigan. Which is really fucking weird because I'd honestly, I'd never met anybody from Michigan before, like, which sounds kind of stupid, but I'm from Vermont. So there's not many, uh, I guess it's not that far away compared to like the West coast or whatever, but yeah. I don't know. I, I just thought that was kind of funny and I met another one now too. Yeah, dude, Michiganders, man. We like to be outside. Where in uh, Michigan are you from? I'm from a small town called Okemos. It's uh, the Lansing area, like center of the state right next to Michigan state. Oh, cool. Yeah, like I said, I've never been to Michigan, but I've heard good things. Um, I think I think you said you listened to episode number one with Indy, and he's from yeah. the uh, Detroit area. So I did hear quite a bit about Michigan. I learned what the UP was over the course of my hike because, like I said, yep. I met a lot of people from Michigan. So. <laughs> so when we were talking on Friday, you said something that I thought was pretty interesting in that before your successful through hike this past summer, 2018 – you had set out to hike the AT another time, and you made it a pretty significant amount of the way, but you weren't able to complete the hike. Um, do you want to just talk about what happened there and kind of your shot at redemption that you got this past summer? Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, 2016, I went Sobo, um, and it was good. I just like had some stuff going on back home, like starting in Maine. So it was like... At a certain point in your through hike, like you have to, see, you see the like the light at the end of the tunnel, and you just just grind, 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 and like I felt like from the beginning, I was just at that point, just like trying to hit those miles, and like I had some good times, and like hiked with some boys and had a good time, but like I just was just trying to finish, and just like the stuff back home seemed to get worse and worse, and like I wasn't sure, like the trail is always there, but I didn't know like what was the right decision, and so like I got to the Shenandoahs and. Um, which is around mile 1300 going south and my dad was coming out to visit me and uh, I just made the decision to go home it was just like really tough like I remember just like a few days prior just like breaking down about it on trail and just like it was just such a tough decision um, huge blow to the ego I just like there's no way like from the start I was like there's no way I'm not finishing the trail like I'm doing the miles I'm feeling great like I'm not gonna not get to Georgia like I gotta get there and I just made a decision to get off and it was like a tough decision, but it ended up being the right decision. And so I think it's important, like just like knowing when to quit, like when you're not having a good time and like just owning it and being okay with it and realizing that just because you quit doesn't mean like your journey was a failure. And so that's something that I kind of, I learned. For sure. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Uh, What year did you say your first attempt was? 2016. So just like two years prior two years and obviously it wasn't discouraging enough that you didn't want to give it another go Um, when you were considering getting off the trail and when you made that decision to get off the trail um, in the back of your mind did you think you would come back were you not sure at the time like what was going through your head as far as potentially coming back to redeem yourself I guess you could say Oh, a hundred percent. Like I just like, I have a goal. I want a triple crown. Like I just love the long distance hiking. I love the community. It's just like, 
it really amps me up just to like do those big mile days and like also like be around like really awesome people. So like I knew I was coming back and I was pretty bummed. Like somebody close to me was like, are you sure you can through hike? I mean, like this last time didn't really work out for you. And so I was like, Oh, hundred percent now I'm definitely going to through hike the AT. Um, and it's like, I didn't know, I honestly, I was trying to hike the PCT, uh, this year. Um, I told a bunch of people I was going to hike the PCT just cause I wasn't sure if I wanted to come back to the AT so soon. Right. Um, but financially I just like couldn't swing it, like picking a date in April or May. I just like, wasn't sure if I'd be ready. So I knew pretty much it'd be pretty easy to swing a Sobo hike. I could leave in June or July or even August if I was going to, uh, just do things a little bit quicker. So I just like talked to one of my friends that was currently on the CDT finishing his triple crown. Uh, and I was like, dude, what do you think I should do, man? Like, I'm pretty bummed. I want to do the PCT, but I'm not sure about the AT. And he just kind of was like, dude, just, just do it, man. Like you're going to enjoy it a lot more doing the AT first. And so, uh, I went for it. Uh, that, uh, that just makes me kind of curious. Why did he think you would enjoy the AT more than the PCT? I'm not sure. And like, it's tough for me cause I don't have any personal experience, but I just heard like maybe the views are a bit more. And so people come to the AT, like expect. Not that the AT is not beautiful or anything. I love the AT, um, but like maybe there's not as many views. Um, and it's like obviously the PCT is a bit more graded, and so like people don't expect like the significant elevation gain and loss that you have to do on the AT. Like the, there's like not that many switchbacks. Like you're going straight up, especially in like southern Maine and New Hampshire. Oh yeah. Um, so just like yeah, and then like the green tunnel, like mentally, I don't know. That's just maybe that's what I'm thinking. So it's maybe tough to go from those views to the green tunnel. I'm not sure. Damn. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I gotta ask. So you had two through hike attempts over the course of three years. So like, what was? I'm I'm trying to phrase this so I don't like sound like an asshole, but like what like in your life situation, I guess you could say was going on that allowed you to like afford the time to do you know two long hikes like that i mean like what was like were you in school like were you working like what was what was going on there i'm just kind of curious yeah for sure so like i don't know i've always been one to just like follow my heart i'm just like gonna do do what i gotta do and so i was uh, i took a year off um going to college and i was living in colorado like having a good time and i decided well better go to school so I went to Michigan State. Um, my mom had passed away my senior high school, and so, like, I didn't really think too much about what school I wanted to go to. I just said, oh, I guess I'll just go back home and be with the family and, like, help them out. And so it really wasn't the best fit for me going there. And so I was just, like, and I couldn't do it anymore. So I was like, you know what, screw this. I'm going to just save up money. And so I was working full time while going to school and just, like, putting away the extra money and just decided I was going to, I actually ended up like quitting the last semester. So I went to only went to three semesters of school and just saved up all the money I could and just decided to go for the AT. Um, I just like needed to, I just like needed to get away. I like needed to get out of all the drama of school and like my home life and stuff. So the AT seemed to be a good place to kind of run away. Hell yeah. I think that's so crazy because I don't, I don't know about you, but I would say probably the number one reason why people at least from from my experience, why people say they can't or won't do a long distance hike like that is because they just don't have the time or whatever. You know, you hear those excuses, and the fact that you were just like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it. And two times, mind you, you know, setting aside that much time, two different, uh, yeah. two independent times, like I think that's fucking crazy. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it's been a trip. It's been good. I'm like, I'm actually going to be going to school this spring. So finally settling down. I've been like living the seasonal life uh, for a bit. So just saving money each season, working different jobs. And so it's gonna be nice to just be in like one place for a minute. Yeah, for sure. I know someone's going to hear what I just said there and be like, oh, well, you guys are young. You don't have kids and a family and all that shit. So that is true. Yeah. Like, I understand that it is like hard for some people. Obviously, if you've fucking two young kids, you can't just like up and leave your your job and all that shit. So I understand that, but I still think it's, it's pretty cool that Scott was just like, fuck it. I'm just going to do it. You know, this is what I want. I'm not going to settle for a lifestyle that I'm not happy with. And, you know, I'm just going to follow my heart as cliche as that sounds. But, um, that's, that's really cool, man. Yeah, dude. All right. So I know we briefly touched on this subject at the beginning there, but I want to go back to the whole Southbound thing. Yeah. So for me personally, I, 
for a little while, a brief minute there, I considered going uh, southbound on my through hike. Reason being is I had to wait to graduate from college before I left, and I was a little bit concerned that a mid-May start date wouldn't be enough time to do a straightforward Nobo through hike. Uh, in the end, I ended up going Nobo, and I finished with a couple weeks to spare before uh, Katahdin closed, so it ended up working out. Yeah. But, um, can you just talk a little bit more about why you went southbound, and then maybe... I don't know, would you would you do it differently if you did it again? You know, what are some of the advantages or disadvantages of going Sobo? And I don't know, just kind of talk about your experience with that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know, I think Southbound, again, is just, like, nice to get away from the crowds. Like, and that's definitely coming from, like, a biased point of view because I've heard, like, I'm sure, like, you leaving so late, like, we're able to get away from some of that because um, most people leave in, like, what, April and March? Yeah, March and April, I would say. For the first, like, month of my hike, I really didn't meet that many other thru-hikers. You know, there was still a lot of traffic on the trail, you know, people doing sections or weekends or whatever, but it wasn't until I got up to maybe, like, central Virginia that I started to catch up to people that had started before me, so I kind of got the solitude a little bit at the beginning, but for the most part, I was still kind of in the bubble, you could say. I don't know. Yeah, like, I don't know. I also feel like Southbinders, like, sometimes... I just think it's kind of I, we don't get as much like trail magic maybe and like because of that like I thought it was just maybe more of a raw experience and for I, sure and that's like not not to take away from any nobos I hate like the nobo sobo like hate or anything but I just like kind of thought it was cool to just feel like I was on my own and like in the wilderness and like as, I feel like as soon as like we pass like Harper's Ferry and that's when it's like really gets quiet for us um, I was honestly a bit lonely like I was. Fortunately, I was with somebody, but I remember in 2016, like, the last month of my hike, I, like, didn't see anybody. Like, I saw, like, section hikers and stuff, but I was, like, getting pretty lonely and pretty depressed. And so, like, this time around, I was like, okay, I, like, kind of want to find some people to, like, chill with that are going the same pace. And I think it's, like, maybe tougher for Sobos to find, like, that that group that are going the same pace right, as them. Right. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. And also, I think it's, like, cool. Like, I know, like, at the end of my hike... I was kind of like wondering how it would be to finish at Katahdin because like going southbound is a bit anticlimactic at going to Springer. Um, but then I was like, well, I wasn't really enjoying the end. It was like grind, grind, grind. Like, do you feel like you enjoyed like Southern Maine and the Whites as much as like maybe if you had done it at the beginning? I don't know, to be honest, because like uh, it's it's tough because I mean, as I'm sure you can relate, by the time you get to those, you know, last couple states, it's like you're so close yeah. that part of you is like, all right, I'm ready to kind of wrap this shit up. And then part of you is kind of torn, you know, trying to still enjoy the time you have out there. So I don't know. I always thought that going southbound, would, it would be almost tougher to enjoy, you know, the the whites and, you know, parts of Maine there because you're hitting the hardest part of the trail before you've got your trail legs, right? True, but, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I didn't go southbound, so that's just kind of that's just kind of what I thought about. Yeah, it. no, that definitely that makes sense. I remember like hitting Maine and like just seeing the rock faces. Like, are you kidding me? This is the trail. Like, I'm like literally <laughs> sliding on my butt going down this stuff. Like, just so sketchy. Um, I really have no good answer for like what's better, like Sobo or Nobo, other than just like fewer people and like. I mean, regardless of which way you go, like, you're going to have a good time. And I feel like everyone wants to be part of that, uh, something bigger than themselves. So it's like, when you're Nobo, it's like, go Nobo. It's like, when you're Sobo, it's like, team Sobo, Sober or die. But <laughs> we're all in the AT. Like, we're having a good time. We're through hiking and, like, the same community and everything. Same trail, just yeah, different direction. <laughs> different direction. <laughs> I know, Um, see, personally, I never really thought there was a right or wrong way to hike it, obviously, but... I had a buddy that I hiked with, a guy named Classic, who would, like, as soon as we started running into the South Bounders, which was, I'd say we hit, like, the bubble of them, if you want to even call it a bubble, the majority of them from the time I was in maybe, oh, geez, I don't even know, like, New York through, you know, maybe early New Hampshire by that point, they'd pretty much all gone through, and he would always, like, talk about it, he would be like, I don't understand how people can go southbound. Like, why wouldn't you want to finish on Katahdin? And, and he, the, I guess the example or whatever he would always use is 
he would say, who eats their ice cream before they eat their potatoes? <laughs> and I was like, dude, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, I don't fucking know. I mean, sure, Katahdin's a little more, you know, it's just fucking, it's crazier than Springer, that's for sure. It's definitely a more, like, wild finish, but, like, I mean, at, at the same time, it's like, you don't just do it for that finish, you know? Like, you do it for the experience, so... I don't I don't really see that much of a, a difference between the two directions, honestly. Yeah, exactly. And also it's like tough. It's like cause like as Southbounders, like we hear from the beginning, like, oh, you just you just did the best part of the trail. And it's like, dude, fuck man. I've got like two thousand <laughs> miles to hike. Like more. Like I hope I enjoy the rest of it. And so it's like trying to find like and honestly, yeah, like Maine and uh, the whites are the best part of the trail, but like trying to find like the beauty in all the small things. Like I just each day, like trying to pick out like a few like things that like I really appreciated about that day. Like I tried to like hike each day towards the end, especially like when I was like in grind mode, like if this today was my last day, like would this be a good day? And like all those like bad days I had where I was like, fuck, I don't know if I can do this. I just like would try to live by that, like pick a few cool things that happened that day and like say, okay, if I was to end right here, like this would have been a good day to end on. That's awesome, man. And the other thing, the other thing too, is like, it's really only the middle part of the trail, in my opinion, anyways, that's like not as much fun as either end of the trail. So yeah, you don't get to finish on Katahdin when you go southbound, but there's still a lot of cool sections going through the southern part of the trail. I know the Rowan Highlands was one of my favorite parts of the trail, hands down. You got the Smokies, obviously, which kind of fucking sucked for me, but that was just because of the weather. I'm sure if it was uh, nice out, it would have been really cool going through there. So it's not like you hit, like, the best part of the trail and then the rest is just, like, boring too, you know? Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's really that middle part, you know, from, like I said, at least in my opinion, from, I don't know, maybe after Shenandoah up to, you know, Massachusetts, Vermont, that's kind of... I shouldn't call it boring. Like I did it. Like it was, it was cool, (laughs) but like, you know, it's just not quite as exciting as the Southern and Northern part of the trail, but I don't know. It all works out. It all works out. Yeah. I mean, I did that section twice too. And it was, (laughs) it was all right doing the second time. I didn't think I would enjoy it, but I still ended up enjoying it too. For sure. Um, I want to go actually back to your, uh, redemption shot real quick. There's something I, I meant to ask yeah. that I totally skipped over. I'm on my game today for sure. Not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> what were some of the things that you did, uh, differently the second time around? Like what, what did you learn from your first hike? What did you change up, uh, when you gave it another shot? Oh yeah. Like, I don't know. I was like a bit, because I had back, done like a significant amount of backpacking before. Like I was like, dude, I got this. Like I was like going on like the online, like white blazes board you know looking at things and i was just like seeing so much like this is the right way to hike like you have to hike like this here's my gear and i was just like kind of getting pissed off about it so i was like well i don't have a whole lot of money for gear i'm just gonna take what i have so i had like a gregory baltoro 75 fucking heavy pack man and like i brought like a jet boil and like i shouldn't have brought it but like i wasn't gonna let somebody tell me i can't do it and I ended up hiking like the whole 1300 miles with that stuff and it was fine. But like coming back, like I saved up some money. I was making, I was living in Alaska, like doing a guiding position. I was able to save up some money That's there. And awesome. so like, yeah, it was real fun. A little zip, zip line guide, Hell Shaka yeah. bro. If you've ever heard that, seen the South Park epi. Um, but yeah, so I saved some money and like was able to buy like a nice pack. Like I have a ULA circuit now and like a few other things and made my, I'm definitely like not ultra light. Like I'm, got a 15 pound base weight but pretty light i would say lighter Um, than average for sure yeah yeah definitely i know some people get like 10 pounds or less like that's the only way to do it but i had a few splurge items and stuff but yeah main thing i guess was like the gear and um also like coming out to the trail i just like felt like i was at home like i was just like confident like the trail really gives you confidence like not just hiking but like i feel like in life in general and so, like, I just felt like when I hit the trail again, I hit Katahdin Kadot- day one, I was just, like, so amped. and just, like, felt so at home. I felt like I was, like, back. Again, I just think that's – the fact that you went and re-hiked that 1,300 miles is <laughs> fucking crazy because I guess – I'm going to sound like a dumbass here doing math in my head, but 1,300 miles would be, you know, what is that? It's got to be at least halfway through the trail, right? That's probably – that's more than halfway through the trail, right? Yeah, so, like, I was in the, Shen- like, halfway through the Shenandoahs, so, yeah, yeah, dude, redoing it again, I was like, holy shit, dude, that was a, f- that's a long way. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. 
Because I know that when I was going along, sometimes me and my friends would talk about, you know, if we had to get off the trail here, would we start all the way over again? Or would we just kind of pick up where we left off? And honestly, dude, I don't know. If I hiked, if I had only done, you know, a couple hundred miles or even 500 miles, I don't know. I probably would have gone over and, and, and started over again. But dude, over half the trail, I don't know. That... You you must have been determined because that's fucking crazy. I just felt like I had to show, like, prove to my – not to anybody else, but, like, prove to myself, like, it wasn't a failure. Like, 2016 was just, like, a journey and, like, I can through hike the trail. Yeah, that's that's just fucking crazy. Like, I think um, I think you were destined to make it that second time around, honestly, just purely based on the fact that you wanted to go back – and rehike all that stuff. I mean, clearly the motivation was there. For anybody who's thinking about through hiking in the future, like that's the kind of fucking attitude you got to have about it if you if you're set on making it the whole way. I mean, you got to be that determined. You got to be willing to put yourself through 1300 miles of fucking pain and bad weather and all that shit, you know, a second time just because you want it that much. So, hell yeah, man. I I really uh I really respect that. Yeah, well, appreciate it, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's just, like, all about, like, in the end, like, I'm going to literally crawl there. If somebody cuts off my legs, I have to get to Katahdin or I have to get to Springer. Hell yeah. So, I kind of want to transition into some food talk, because fucking yeah. everyone loves to talk about food, right? That's all you think about when you're hiking. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, if I recall correctly, when we spoke on Friday, you said that you hiked most of the trail without a stove. Whole trail without the stove, man. A little bit of... I'm a gross boy. Yeah, that is gross. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny. Um, you probably haven't heard it yet. The episode just came out uh, last night, actually. But in my last episode with uh, Mikey Brinkus, episode number four, he talked a lot about his decision to send his uh, his uh, stove home in Hot Springs, North Carolina, which is only about less than 300 miles into the trail if you're going northbound. And he talked a lot about how it actually kind of came back to bite him. And he ended up actually, for those of you who haven't heard the episode, which you should go listen to it, by the way, um, he, he said that he thinks that's the reason why he ended up actually not being able to finish his through hike a mere 150 miles from the end because he was oh, just, damn. he wasn't eating enough. He didn't have the energy. He was having some uh, problems with his stomach because of it. So, I mean, that's what he told me anyways. So I kind of yeah. want to ask you like to, I don't, I don't know, because Clearly, people can do the no stove thing, clearly, because you just fucking said you did it. (laughs) So I want you to kind of like shed some light on the way you did it and, you know, how it worked for you, like what you ate and just like, you know, talk about how it actually worked, unlike uh, Mikey's experience. Yeah, for sure. So like, I definitely didn't do it the right way. Like what you should do is like, first of all, I was Talenti gang all the way. Like, so like Talenti is like that fancy sorbet you get in the grocery store and they've got like nice small little containers and that you can close back up. And that seemed to be like the popular, like stoveless, uh, container. Um, so what you do is just like, you take that container, you grab some, typically you're not going to want to use like noodles or anything. Cause those are going to take longer to like rehydrate. But like I did like nor pasta sides, um, or I mean rice sides, uh, instant mashed potatoes, like couscous, Stuff like, or some people would, I know, like my buddy Four Mile, like he, his stepmom made a bunch of dank meals that she had um, used a dehydrator to dehydrate and he did, he cold soaked it as well. And so, like, at your last water source, you'll just put that food in with some water and then, like, close it up. And then by the time you get to your spot for dinner, like, it should be rehydrated and you eat a nice meal. I was a bit like, I don't even say I was lazy, dude. I'm just like, I'm just fucking gross, man. I literally just like <laughs> threw in the rice side, put in some peanut butter in there, threw that water in there, a little bit of tuna, and I just like ate my food crunchy and just, I don't know, <laughs> God, <laughs> just gross. <man. laughs> uh, it sounds gross now, especially just because I'm back in the real world, but I just was like real lazy and like it just tasted so good out there. That's yeah. I couldn't do it personally, <laughs> but I I mean, it's it's fairly common on the trail nowadays, I would say. I mean, definitely not the majority of people. I'd say most people yeah. have a stove, but it's not like so uncommon that you see somebody do it and you're like, "Holy shit, I've never fucking seen that before." I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like it's just like I just liked it cuz the simplicity. Like I just like to hike all day and like 
the last thing I wanted to do was take out a stove and like have to deal with that or like in town, like worry about fuel or like even breakfast. Like I just put breakfast essentials and I threw a, a few uh, instant coffees and drank it cold. Like I didn't really need a warm breakfast, but like maybe if I was going north and like had to deal with the winter or like now if I was still on the trail going south, yeah. like I know a bunch of people are like maybe I'd want like a hot meal, but I didn't really need any of that like on this hike. Yeah, for sure. Um, what were, I don't think I asked you uh, while we've been recording anyways, what were your start date, start date and end date? What was your start date and end date? Yeah. So I started June 16th, actually literally the same day that I started in 2016. <laughs> um, and then I ended uh, October 15th. So a little less than a month ago. Yeah. Shit. You're fresh off. I mean, I guess I'm kind of fresh off too, but I'm about yeah. 14 days less fresh off than, than <laughs> you are. That's crazy, man. So how many days was that again? 120... 122 days. 122 days. So that's pretty fast, I would say. Um, talk to me about that a little bit. Like, did you train before? Like, how did you like just fucking find the grit to just fucking grind like that? Like, that's that's a fast through hike, man. Yeah, like, I don't like. I just like don't want to come off like braggy or anything like there's definitely people who are like killing it like more than me like doing the 100 days and stuff and like I just kind of like to like push myself and like I just I started out doing 20s even just through the 100 mile though the 100 mile to be fair is like kind of have to probably yeah yeah, it's like the easiest part of Maine to um it's like flat (laughs) ish but then I was like worried for a second, I was like, oh man, like no one's going the same pace as me. Like I better slow down. And so I did slow down for a bit until I hit the whites. And then I was like, oh, dude, I want to just keep going. And so I was able to find somebody in Massachusetts, actually four mile, shout out to four mile real quick. Uh, we started the same day and we met up at Upper Goose Pond and finished the trail. And it just kind of was like, it's just a nice feeling to like get done with the day and just be like exhausted. And then the next day, like feel all right and then just be exhausted i don't know i just like that for me just gave me a little bit of a high but i also felt like it was a fine line where i was able to take like some zero days and like take some nero days and still have fun but at the same time like be consistently like pushing myself and trying to do those big mile days and so i don't know it's not for everybody um but i just kind of i enjoyed doing big mile days hell yeah so like i said i did it faster than normal as well not quite as fast as you obviously but i know that there was definitely a lot of times especially in the middle in the beginning part of the trail where i just felt like i was like on a death march sometimes i don't know i was just i was really pushing myself and i think my reasons were a little bit different i'm not sure if i would have maybe maybe i would have done it the same pace if i didn't have a time crunch obviously trying to get Mm -hmm. to katahdin before it gets too cold to summit but um I don't know, like, did you, did you have, like, a reason that you wanted to finish faster? Like, was there something you wanted to be back for or a deadline or anything like that? Or did you just, like you said, you just wanted to fucking push yourself and grind? No, I, like, literally, I just, like, at first I was like, dude, maybe I'll go for 100 days coming out of the trail. And, like, but I didn't want to tell anybody that because I remember in 2016, like, I uh, told people the date I wanted to hit Harper's Ferry. Um, and a bunch of people were like, dude, you can't do that. Like, that's going to be, that's, you're averaging over 20 miles a day with no zero days at that point. I was like, well, I just like think it'd be cool to hit. I think it was like my birthday. I wanted to hit it on. And they're like, well, yeah, it's just going to be kind of hard. And so I just got pissed and I did it and actually hit it like a day before my birthday. Hell yeah. Yeah, dude. So I was pretty pumped. (laughs) Fuck them. Pretty pumped on that. But, uh, I don't know. Like, I just like didn't want to tell anybody what day I wanted to finish and like was kind of like. I didn't want to do a bit quicker. And then I heard some Nobo in like Vermont say like 124 days was like the day Earl Schaefer finished his first through hike. And it was like the hundredth anniversary of him, uh, through hiking the trail or maybe his life. Oh, 60th anniversary of him through hiking gotcha. hundredth, his hundredth year of living if he was still alive. And so like they were trying to finish 124 days. And so at Vermont on, I was like, well, 124 days sounds like a pretty cool thing. So I think I'm going to go for that. And then, ended up finishing two days before that nice what was um like what did, did you have like a strategy going into it because i know I, don't, I only ask because my kind of strategy i guess you could call it was to just push myself as much as i could on like the full hiking days 
And then rather than taking a lot of zeros, I would just kind of do a Nero. So only hike, you know, half the day, you know, take the rest of the day off, rest up as much as I could, and then, you know, push on for another couple full days. Or were you, you know, just grinding hard for like a number of days? And then would you take like a full day off or, you know, what, like, did you have like a strategy when it came to that? I mean, just kind of talk about that a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Like, I don't even know if I had like a full on strategy. I knew I like, at first I wasn't, I wasn't concerned with it at all. So I just like would do some big days and then I'd meet some people and I'd take a few zeros, um, or a zero. I never took too many zeros in a row, but, uh, then like towards like, I don't even know, like after the whites, I was like kind of thinking like, I wanted to just start doing big. So I tried to like only take Nero days, but of course, like at some point I'm going to need right. to take a you zero. Take so at like, some point, yeah. yeah, so I took it. I can't remember my zero days, but I remember just like, I knew like the days I'm going to take a zero. So I was like, well, I'm going to take a zero close to this day. So these days I'm going to do some big mile days, um, just to like make up for that. Or, and I knew I'd like have a day to rest. And then, like, during the day, like, I don't know, I didn't even start early either. Like, some people were like, I'm doing 10 miles by 11. And I did that for a little bit, but, like, I just didn't mind night hiking. I said, well, I'm just going to go to this shelter, go to this camp spot, so I'll get there one way or another. Like, if I have to night hike, like, almost the whole night, I'll do that. I'm just going to get there and, like, take my time. So I don't even know if I even had, like... I didn't even, I just didn't plan it out. I just said, I'm going here and like, whatever happens, happens. Like if I get there before dark, I get there before dark. If I have to hike in the night, I'll get there at night. How often did you find yourself night hiking? I know that I, I actually, I, I've night hiked before on different uh, hikes than the Appalachian Trail, mm-hmm. but on my through hike, I didn't night hike at all, except for like half a mile one time, which was not by choice, which is a whole other fucking story. I'm not going to get into it, <laughs> but um, yeah, like how often were you doing that? And uh, I got to ask, I fucking hate snakes. I'm from Vermont. Oh, damn. There's no poisonous snakes here. So, or yeah. venom, whatever, fucking poisonous snakes. I'm just going to say that. And um, I know I would have been sketched out about fucking stepping on one of those things at night. Like, did you ever, like, it sounds, I feel like kind of a dumbass asking this question, like a fucking pussy, but I don't know. <laughs> did you ever fucking No, dude, I snakes? actually did. Like, dude, like, in the Shenandoahs, like, I was at, like, one overlook. It was the like nighttime obviously but we were like looking at the stars and like the city in the distance and like we were walking back from the overlook and i almost stepped down and like four mile looked back at me and like my foot was about to step on a copperhead i was like oh shit dude yeah fuck that <laughs> yeah. fuck that but so i like i just became cautious like after that like cautious about like rock faces and stuff like just being like really anal about like where i was stepping and like looking all over the place that next where it was like bears like every single set of eyes i'd be just fucking yelling and then just be like deer just laying there like dude what the fuck man like we're trying to sleep just like chill out <laughs> and we're just like making a huge amount of noise but i did see some bears too like night hiking i don't know i did a significant amount of night hiking like we just kept getting into camp at like eight or nine and we like made a joke like it didn't matter like when we left we were just gonna get there at eight or nine so i like, do let's just fucking chill out all day and like leave at eight and get there at nine because it doesn't matter, like, we're going to get there at nine anyways. Now, did you ever kind of, like, purposely set yourself up for some night hiking to avoid some of the hot days? Because I, I know that was something I definitely considered when I was going through pretty much the whole trail up until Massachusetts is when it started to cool down for me. Um, I, I guess that's definitely a, a benefit of hiking at night as well. Yeah, no, uh, I did that in 2016. I remember, did you meet Grandpa at all? Grandpa, no, I don't think so. I don't recall that name. Okay, he's, like, some guy that, like, uh, literally hikes the trail every year. Um, But I remember running him in 2016, and, like, he only hiked, like, in New York, like, during the night. Uh, He was going southbound that year, too. Um, And so, like, I remember in 2016, like, we definitely, like, tried, especially because that was, that year was, had a bad drought, and it was, like, hotter than usual. So we definitely tried to hike early morning or night. But this time around, like, again, I didn't plan anything. I just, I was an idiot. I literally hiked during, like, the hottest part of the day and just kept trucking as much as I could. And I probably had like heat exhaustion half the time and didn't really realize it. Like, I don't even know. I think you would have realized it. I've, I've come pretty close before and really, yeah, you, you would probably realize it, but <laughs> okay. So I just sound like an idiot right there, but <laughs> no, it's all good, dude. It's all good. Yeah. Fucking the heat sucks, man. I could, I could yeah. probably talk like for an entire episode about that. Cause that was, that was huge for me. I mean, you're from the North too, so you can probably relate about 
how much the heat fucking sucks. Like, I've literally oh, lived yeah. in Vermont my entire life. Like, it does not get up to 90 plus degrees very often here during the summer. So, hiking through that shit in, like, the south and even the, the mid-Atlantic part of the trail was, it was tough for me. Oh, I'm sure, dude. I mean, like, Northbounders, like, especially, like, so- Sobos, we got fucked with weather too, but I feel like you guys got fucked even worse. Like, it was, like, raining every day, and then when it wasn't raining, it was, like, a heat advisory. Like, it was so fucked, man. Yeah. N- fucking, oh, God. I've t- uh, I have can't even, I can't even talk about it, dude. I fucking hate the heat. <laughs> yeah. And then by the end, yeah. by the end of the trail, when I was, like, going through New Hampshire and Maine, I was already complaining about the cold, so I think I just oh, like yeah. to complain. I feel like every thru-hiker likes to complain. That's just about how it is. <laughs> Yep, just have to complain. (laughs) For sure, for sure. So I got to ask you, um, for those of you listening, I didn't know Scott's trail name until right before we started recording here. And I was delighted to find out that it's actually (laughs) Hell Yeah Jesus. And I'm delighted because that's a fucking sick trail name. So I hate asking people this question, to be honest, because I always hated it when people ask me this question, mostly just because my trail name's fucking lame. But like, how did you get Hell Yeah Jesus as a fucking trail lane? That's crazy. Well, first, I'm glad you like it because there are a lot of people that don't like it. Oh, yeah. I guess, don't I guess some it. people could <laughs> maybe in the South could be a little offended by that. But nah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, I don't know. So I have long hair in case you didn't know. Long hair and a beard. And like, uh, I was in it was in 2016. Like, I just say Hell Yeah and dude a lot and talk like your typical like bro. <laughs> and uh so I like get into Rangeley, Maine, and like this guy, I'm just walking down the street with my hair down. He's like, "Dude, you look just like Jesus, man." <laughs> I was like, "Oh hell yeah, man, yeah, dude." And uh, then like I sit down to eat, and like we had joked about it before too. Like I think like a few a few days prior in like Stratton, Maine, like somebody had joked that, "Oh, dude, you look just like Jesus," or like I took an Instagram photo too, and like. It was just kind of like synchronicity that happened in Rangeley, the next town. And then like my waitress was like, you know what? Like me and the girls are talking like you look just like Jesus. That should be your trail name. And like I didn't want to just be Jesus. So I was like, hell yeah, Jesus. Just to like so I wasn't proclaiming to be Jesus. Um, but yeah, <laughs> nothing super crazy. I think that's smart too because – I definitely met like at least one. I'm thinking more than one G- oh, Jesus. Yeah, there's so, so many. Yeah, you gotta distinguish exactly. yourself a little bit. Yeah, I didn't even know if it would stick, but yeah, it did. But yeah, exactly. It's so what many do you Jesus mean you didn't there. know it would stick, dude? That's like that's fucking <laughs> that's an awesome trail name. That shit's gonna stick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. So well, thanks, man. Let's kind of. What, what was your trail name? Sorry, dude. Oh no, you're good. Uh, my trail name is Narnar. Oh fuck, dude. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I got it. See, I think the reason why I don't like to tell people. Or not, not that I don't like to tell people what my name is, but I, the reason I don't like to explain it is just because I got it when I was like 16. I tried to through hike the long trails, like my first backpacking trip ever, and I didn't make it very far. I only made it about 30 miles in, but I did pick up a trail name, and then I just kind of stuck with it. So I don't know. I I, w- I was really weird about that. My friends used to be like, "Dude, like it's just a fucking trail name. Like explain it. Like it's fine." But that was I don't know. That was like my one little pet peeve. Like just every day like oh what's your trail name because i was i was catching and passing people like almost every day after like my first month so like it was just like a it was just i mean of course you're gonna get asked your trail name all the time when you're hiking but i don't know i'm just i'm just an asshole about it (laughs) no i I get it i get it but i like your trail name too (laughs) hell yeah nar nar and hell yeah jesus (laughs) those are fucking out there for sure so i ask pretty much all my guests all five of my guests at this point <laughs> um what some of their craziest stories are because i mean when you're fucking living in the backcountry <laughs> for four or five months like you're gonna have some crazy stories i know that when we spoke on the phone on friday you had mentioned a couple things and we didn't get into the stories because i wanted to save it for now obviously but you know i, I kind of want to hear what are some of the craziest things that happened to you out yeah. there some of the craziest experience or craziest situations you found yourself in yeah for sure uh I guess, like, the weirdest, like, just stuff that I would, like, something, like, I would never do in, like, the real world, like, was in 2016, we were in Warren, New Hampshire, like, it was the town, like, right before Musilak or, like, right after, uh, for me, I don't know if you went into that town, it's like, there's nothing going on. I, I didn't go into Warren, no, but, um, I think I recall, like, seeing it on the map and stuff, 
I don't know. I've, I've I'm like I've driven through the whites a lot because I mean I'm I'm pretty close by, but I don't think I've ever stopped in Warren. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, continue. <laughs> yeah, so I just like we weren't even planning on going to that town. Like I just messed up on my resupply and like didn't have enough food. So I was like, I was hiking with uh two guys and like I was like, dude, like you guys care if we just like go into town real quick, It'd be like quick in and out. Um, and they're like, yeah, cool. So we hitchhiked into that Warren and. We, of course, like, I resupplied, but, like, when you resupply, you got to get food to go to. So we were, like, outside on the picnic table, like, drinking some sodas and eating, chowing down on some food. And, like, this hippie guy comes out of the car. Like, pretty sure he was, like, shirtless with, like, dreads. And he was like, yo, you guys hike at the trail? We're, like, yeah, man. He's like, well, my name's Skeeter. You guys want to come cliff jumping with me? And we're like, uh, yeah, dude, sure, man. And so we grab some beers and we just, like, go cliff jumping with him. It was just like this weird place and then he just like yeah well hey like after done cliff jumping like my buddy's renovating a schoolhouse like you guys want to go out back there and like have a fun time and we're like uh sure man like so stupid because like he was drinking too with us at like uh cliff jumping so we just like get in this man's sketchy man's car again and go to the schoolhouse like I was expecting his buddy had known him for like years and years like they grew up together but this guy literally had met him like a few days prior it's just like so awkward and like we get there and then like a random bonfire starts happening and like all the locals come and it's just like just so weird and like we get they had made like daffodil wine or something too something i had never had and just like we had a fun daffodil time wine <laughs> yeah what dude, is I don't that? Even know. i've never heard of that i before. have no idea like i'm literally <laughs> just like drinking the stuff that this man hands me just this sketchy <laughs> man with no sh- no teeth he <laughs> like no teeth either <laughs> oh dude it was weird and then we just like start hiking the next day so just like it felt like a dream just some weird i don't know it's like weird stuff like that in the trailer people pick you up to like do cool stuff sometimes yeah that shit happens like it's it's crazy i feel like i mean you definitely meet some weird like characters on the trail for sure but i feel like a lot of people's experiences they like the weirdest people they meet are like actually off the trail like when they're in town yeah. or, or hitchhiking <laughs> or something like that yeah exactly so many like drunk people will pick you up hitchhiking too like i'm always surprised and like you don't even realize it half the time until they're already driving you and you're like uh shoot man yeah i was gonna i was gonna ask you about that actually because in episode one with indy he talked oh, yeah. a little bit about how he had a couple drunk drivers and I like I didn't have any the whole time. Thankfully, I I have had one on a different hike I was doing a couple of years ago, but okay. on the AT I didn't have any. Um, I, how I don't like to talk about this honestly because yeah. I feel like it kind of like turns people off from hiking the trail. And, like you shouldn't let that deter you. At the end of the day, you know you're in control of the cars that you get into. You just got to be aware oh, of the yeah. situation. But um, like how like did sounds like you did have some drunk drivers like what like what happened there like how many did you have like i don't even know uh yeah i don't have like too many like not like probably i hitchhiked a fair amount and like i would say like maybe 10 percent. i don't know we're we're drunk or that's pretty high though like shit <laughs> yeah i felt like yeah i don't know man <laughs> they were they were fine like i don't think they were like belligerent still not safe but like mostly I feel like most of my hitches ended up being like just like moms and vans like wanting oh, to sure. like yeah help me out but yeah there's definitely some good old boys especially like up north I feel like or maybe f- way further down south that yeah. just like that's just kind of how it it rolls in those small towns I guess um no one like kind of people just turn the, the other cheek to that kind of stuff yeah, especially in like some of the just like the small like mountain towns, like you just yeah. said. I guess the mid Atlantic part of the trail is just like it's not it, it's more urban basically. There's just mm-hmm. more civilization, so you, you're not quite as isolated. So I, I don't want to say that people that live in rural areas are a bunch of fucking drunk drivers because that's no, not yeah, true, yeah. obviously. <laughs> but I don't know. I I think that's definitely a trend. Um, and like if you're worried about it too like you can always get a shuttle like there's always like a hostel or some trail angel or somebody who's like willing to pick you up and it's not always free that's a nice thing about hitchhiking but you can always like find a ride from somebody that that's a really good point that's i probably should have mentioned that in the first episode when we were talking about it uh th- th- like yeah definitely i don't think there was ever a time where i needed to get into a town 
and there was like no shuttle service available. I mean, if you have the AWOL guide or the Through Hikers Companion or even Gut Hook, I'm pretty sure yeah. has most of that shit. I didn't use Gut Hook, but I know there was always you know phone numbers and comments about people that would would bring people into town. So you know, if you're really that sketched out about hitchhiking, you're still going to be good. Like you can still hike the trail. Obviously, that being said. This is going to sound really stupid saying this after talking about these drunk drivers, but <laughs> I fucking love hitchhiking. It's honestly one of my favorite parts about long distance backpacking. Like it was one of the like the things I was the most stoked for before I set out for my through hike. So, do you have any other like good hitchhiking stories off the top of your head? Oh, yeah, I don't know, man. Like hitchhiking is always a fun time. Like you're just kind of meeting somebody and you don't know how it's going to go, like how they're going to act. Like, are they going to be afraid of me or like, am I going <laughs> to be afraid of them? Like, and like, I never know what to do. Like when a pickup truck pulls up, like sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm just assuming I jump in the back. They're like, no, no, not in the back. Like, or like one time I was like in a pickup truck and I was in the back. Um, and it just started downpouring on me. <laughs> and like literally before that too, like I had my hat on and my hat blew off. And like luckily the guy saw and like drove back and let me oh, grab my hat. Oh, what a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, he was great. But then like five minutes later, it starts downpouring on me <laughs> in the back of the pickup. But they were nice enough to like at that point pull over and like let me uh, come into the back and nice. hang out. Yeah. I love the pickup truck hitches, dude. Like that's, yeah. I always felt like such hiker <laughs> trash. Like just, oh yeah, just such a great. I mean, maybe not when it's raining, but most of the time it's like such a great feeling. You're just fucking in the back of this truck. You're like, yeah, I'm just a piece of shit. Like I don't even give a fuck. Like this is great. <laughs> oh yeah, or you feel a bit badass, and they're like, okay, we don't know if the cops are gonna say anything, so can you just hide? And I'm literally <laughs> just like hiding in the fucking back, like hoping nobody sees me. Just don't <laughs> so know where good. they're taking me. <laughs> so good, I love it. Fucking. Especially when you're in like a group of people. I know I only hitchhiked by myself probably a handful of times. Most of the time I was hitching with other people. And when you're hitching in a group of, you know, three, four people, I mean, most people just don't have enough room in their car. Yeah. So more often than not, you end up in the back of a pickup truck or a couple of times I ended up in the back of a truck with like a cab over it too. So it's like, yeah, I'm kind of inside. Like at least if yeah, it rains, yeah. I'll be good. Like, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah. So good. Love hitchhiking. Um, do you do you have like any other stories not related to hitchhiking um, that you want to get into here? Yeah, man, that's just tough. One. There's like so many like crazy stories. Oh, I know, but... dude. You can take a second to think about it. Yeah, I mean, like the last episode, I know you had talked about someone getting a bear charge. So I had like I had a bear bad bear encounter too. Oh yeah, okay, that's what you were talking about with me when we were on the phone. You said something about like a some guy. Uh, I'll. I'll Fuck it, I'll let you tell the story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't want to, like, overdo the bear. Like, this is, like, a rare thing. But, like, yeah, I just had, like, a bear, bad bear encounter in the Shenandoahs that was kind of sketchy. Um, and, like, it's been, like, I've done a lot of backpacking before. Like, I lived in Alaska and Colorado and stuff. And, like, this is, like, the only time that, like, I had a sketchy one. But, like, Shenandoah is just, like, cram-packed with, like, tourists. And then that means, like, there's, like, bad habits with, like, people leaving trash out. And there's, like, tons of bears. So Oh, yeah. I would say ice... Well, I, I definitely saw the most bears. In fact, I didn't see a single bear the rest of the trail after I went through Shenandoah. Like I Damn. saw, I saw one bear before Shenandoah. I saw like seven or eight bears in Shenandoah, and then I didn't see any other bears after that. So yeah, there's a lot of bears in Shenandoah for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. So I guess I'll just tell the story of not overdoing it, the bear thing. But, no, no, no uh, go for it, dude. Go for it. Yeah. So I just was like um, hiking, and I was. A- changing my podcast so i was like on my phone like not really like looking up at all uh still hiking forward and then i just like look up briefly and literally right in front of me like probably 10 feet away is just like big black mass and i'm like fuck that's a big dog and then like shit that's a fucking bear man (laughs) and so i just like i just start backing up and yelling at this guy and like i actually like filmed it too it's probably a fucking idiot but uh at first he just started he just like walks away from me and i'm like okay that's that's good he's like walking the other direction but like the problem is like he's not veering off the trail and like it was so heavily forested in that one part like he couldn't veer off to the sides and it's like shit like what am i gonna do like i have to go the same direction he's literally walking right now and then out of nowhere he just turns around and starts walking at me i'm like fuck dude and so i just start yelling and like pounding my trekking poles together And he's just not stopping. And I'm like, I have no idea what to do. So I just keep backing up and he keeps following me. And I just, I'm going to have to start throwing some shit at this guy. 
So I, I don't want to like piss him off and like have him run at me. So I'm trying not to like hit him, but I'm chucking some fucking big ass rocks. So like, these are huge rocks and he's not afraid at all. Like he just starts smelling this stuff. Like it's like it's food. And I'm like, fuck, like I actually might have to like fight this guy off. Like he's getting closer and closer. And like, I just don't know how far I'm at the back up. And so I'm just like, keep backing up, keep backing up. And like this other, uh, a lasher, that I knew behind me came up behind me and I was like, dude, like we got to be careful. Like, there's this bear that keeps coming. And sure enough, the bear just comes right around the corner at us. And he's like, Oh fuck dude. And so we're like both packing up and it will not, I'm like, can I kidding you? Like I'm filming this for like over 30 minutes on my phone. And like the guy got sketched out. Like he was, um, I think he was a former Marine and he, so he just like used to hiking with a gun and he got so sketched out. Like he literally took his gun from his backpack like prepared to shoot this bear and like, I remember like we had to like take turns like he would watch my back and I would sprint back and then I'd watch his back and he'd like sprint back and like Holy we had to have walked at least like a mile back like it was going on for quite some time and, and then, he was like following you like coming towards you that whole time yeah dude like the guy literally took out his gun like and he was a pretty big guy and like seemed like he like <laughs> I don't know was had been in the military like he didn't seem like he's scared easily and this guy like is like ready to shoot this bear if he attacks Damn. us um but like luckily the bear just i guess got tired and just well walked away i don't i don't know we didn't see him again but yeah it, was, it turned out to be fine and then my adrenaline was pumped and so i had a great day the rest of the day just <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> did an extra mile to or two miles oh, yeah. i guess at that point dude i was fucking booking it man yeah this last thing in shenandoah is going to waynesboro i think yeah Damn, that's crazy. I'm like, I'm pretty sure bears are just like afraid of me because like I've I'd probably done close to 1500 miles roughly in my life before I set mm-hmm. out on the AT. And granted, a lot of it was in Vermont and around the whites where there's not as many bears, but I've also done a decent amount in the Adirondacks where, especially in the high peaks region of the Adirondacks, there's there's a lot of bears. You're actually required to use a bear canister in certain parts oh, of it. Oh, damn. And I'd still, I should, you know, I'd never, I'd never seen a bear hiking. Like I, I've seen them driving like to and yeah. from trailheads before, but I'd never seen them hiking before. So like, and, and on the AT, like I said, the only place I saw them really was in Shenandoah, nothing besides that. So um, part of me was kind of like, it sounds kind of stupid now, but for the Southern part of the trail, when everybody was seeing bears, like fucking like every day. I just like wasn't seeing any, and I was like, "Shit!" Like I want to see a fucking bear, but oh, yeah, but yeah. then when I hear stories like this and uh, the story that my friend Flossie told me in episode three about a bear bluff charging him, I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, maybe I should like not complain about not fucking seeing these bears because fuck that shit. I'm not trying to like have a gun at the ready to <laughs> defend myself from these fucking things. Like that's just insane." Yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I feel like those are definitely like in the minority 100 percent in the minority yeah, like the for bears sure. don't do that but yeah it is scary when they do like the bluff charging fuck i don't even know what i'd do that'd be real scary just like you have to hold your ground there now when you went through the grayson highlands i know that when i went through there which was in probably like mid-june something like that early june maybe um there was like a big bear problem there and i recall as i got further north i was hearing that the problem was like just getting worse and worse there um oh, like yeah. what was going on through there Dude, yes, yeah, so there's no camping at all in the Grayson Highlands. And so they had, like, totally shut down the camping at that point. Yeah, so you had to, like, hike all the way through it. And, like, I didn't see a bear through it, but I did have, like, that was actually one of my, probably my worst day on trail, like, through the Grayson Highlands. It was a dope day, like, seeing the ponies and stuff, but, like, we had to sleep in that, so, like, right at the highway, like, right before the Grayson Highlands, there is a pull-off, like, pit toilet bathroom and like i spent the night sleeping in that bathroom with my buddy <laughs> i feel like that's a through hiker rite of passage sleeping in a bathroom at oh some yeah point. <laughs> well, i mean that was the only way like i was the word like we got absolutely destroyed by rain like just pouring 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 and like you're so high up like the elevation was just gets getting cold and like it was pitch black and like could only see like five feet in front of me because of the fog and like i was honestly worried about like hypothermia and like that bathroom was a godsend. Like I have never been so excited to see a bathroom in my life. And we had just, we both slept in that bathroom, just like getting high off of the bathroom chemicals all night. Just so nasty. So good. I yeah. think I, I think I might remember that bathroom. 
Is that so? You said it was just after the Grayson Highlands. Yeah. So like right at there was like a highway you crossed, and then there was like kind of like a field there too. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. I don't remember what it was called or what the road was, <laughs> but I, I remember that spot. I stopped there for like a break or whatever. So nice Damn, bathroom. That's crazy. Definitely Fucking recommend it. Sleeping in bathrooms. Yeah. If you do it through <laughs> hike in the future, there's a good chance you're gonna have to sleep in a bathroom. I came very close one time. Um, I didn't actually end up staying in the bathroom. I was in uh, Kent, Connecticut, which is a okay. pretty yeah, yeah. it's a pretty shitty trail town, honestly. There's not really very many accommodations for hikers, but it's so close to the trail that pretty much everybody stops there, I would say. And we had just gotten to the road at the end of like a full day. It was one of those really hot, humid days, and we didn't have a place to stay in town, but we really wanted to just like go and like have a fucking beer, eat a pizza or whatever, you know. And so we were like, fuck it, we'll just go into town and we'll find a place to camp. Like, it'll be fine. Like, what's the worst that could happen? And we went in, we went to the bar, went to this pizza place. We're there for like two or three hours at least. You know, not drunk at this point, but definitely had a couple drinks. And it's already dark at this point. You know, we stumble out and we're like, okay, we got to figure out where the fuck we're going to stay tonight. So we kind of, we were like looking on Google Maps and shit, (laughs) like trying to find like, some like trees somewhere which is a stupid idea because all the trees all the wooded <laughs> areas that we saw on the map we like went over to and of course they were all just like grown in like i was i wasn't trying to get a fucking tick so wasn't trying to deal with that and so eventually we're like it's it's, it's probably 11 o'clock at night at this point oh damn and we're like okay our options are either walk the mile back to the trail it's like 0.8 from the town back to where the trail crosses the road and then like 0.3 or something like that, up pretty steep to a shelter. So we're like, okay, we could either do that, or we could sleep in this bathroom, because Kent, Connecticut actually has a public, like, little restroom there. I don't know if you went into Kent, but there's, like, a little water fountain for hikers. And good choice, by the way. But anyways, there's, like, this little public bathroom. It's, like, the one accommodation for hikers they have. They're like, all right, these people could at least use a fucking bathroom, right? And we're like, okay, like, I guess we're sleeping in the bathroom tonight. Like, that's the only option. Like, there's no way to set our shit up. If I had a tent, I could have probably made it work. But me and Indy both had hammocks. So oh, damn, yeah. It wasn't going to happen. So we're like, all right, fucking sleeping in the bathroom. Let's go. So we walk back over there. It's probably like 1130 at this point. I don't even know. And there's like some like sketchy looking dude like across the street, just like hanging out, smoking cigarettes. He, like, finishes his cigarette. We're, like, waiting for him to leave before we, like, duck into the bathroom, right? Because we don't want him to think. I don't even know. And he, like, lights up another cigarette. We're, like, dude, fuck off. Like, just go. Like, we want to go to sleep. Like, we're tired as shit. And he finally leaves. So we, like, scurry into the bathroom, like, lock the door and shit. There's, like, three of us in this fucking bathroom. Oh, jeez, dude. And, like, Indy, like, lays his shit down. He gets a sleeping pad out and everything. He, like, lays down. And then uh, Flossie, the other guy I was with, he's, like, dude, these lights are definitely, like, motion sensitive. So we're like, fuck. Like, the lights, the light's not gonna turn off at all. Like, we're not gonna get any sleep. So we, like, tried to hoist Flossie up so he could, like, cover it with, like, fucking tape or some shit. Like, hoping that would, like, not trigger the, uh, the sensor so that the lights would turn off. And, of course, that didn't fucking work. It's, like, midnight at this point. We're still, like, kind of drunk. So we're like, fuck it. Guess we're walking back to the trail. So we had to walk the mile back. The fucking point three uphill, like southbound, mind you, just to add insult to injury, because oh, we're northbounders, yeah. we don't want to have to go south, right? <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty fucking shitty. Bathrooms, Wait, dude. When you're at Kent, did you uh see a man with a big white like wolf looking dog? No, I don't think so. I don't think oh, so. No, like I said, I got there. It was like after midnight. By the time I set my shit up, everyone was asleep. So, because like I remember sleeping at that same shelter and like hearing people rolling in like around midnight and stuff and trying to figure out who who that was did you guys have music on no no oh damn okay that would have been crazy if like we had been that, at the same show through that, that night. would be so good <laughs> i still like kind of want to figure out when we passed each other because like yeah i was like trying to think about it a little bit but i mean honestly like i, I can like hardly even remember like when I, I i i know like i told you on the phone i was in hanover new hampshire on august 31st and I'm pretty sure that I was in still in Pennsylvania at the turn of uh, July into August. I think that okay. sounds that's doable, right? Pennsylvania to New Hampshire. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'd probably pass each other in Pennsylvania. I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, somewhere in there, maybe in like New York. I don't even know. 
Who knows, man? Who yeah. knows? Anyways, dude, we're at about an, we're over an hour at this point. That's that's crazy. That went by pretty fast. Damn yeah, man. So I think we're gonna try to wrap it up. For um, sure. I, I really appreciate you wanting to come on. So for everybody listening, Scott actually reached out to me on Instagram before I'd even launched any episodes and uh, told me he was interested in being on the show. And I was like, fuck yeah. So if anybody listening to this has done a through hike of the AT or any trail, it doesn't have to be as long as the AT, any sort of through hike or crazy hike or whatever, and you want to come on the show, let me know. I say my contact information at the beginning of every episode, so I'm I'm not going to say that again. But anyways, Scott, thank you so much for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Dude, thank you, man. I I love being part of the trail community. It's great hearing these like podcasts with some guys from the trail and just like feel like you're still a part of things. Hell yeah, man. Um, Before we sign off here, do you want to plug any social media links so people can follow you on any of your uh, future adventures and you said you're going for the triple crown so I'm sure you'll get yeah man sure I'm, a, I'm not that cool but you can follow me on instagram at a uh, scooter hewley so that's <laughs> s-c-o-o-t-e-r and then hewley is h-u-g-h-l-e-y uh, i've got about 750 fans on there so you know you're killing I'm gonna... it yeah <laughs> more than i have so respect <laughs> oh thanks man hell yeah All right, I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, Thanks for listening, everybody. Episode number five of Trail Tales. Slowly learning how to do a podcast here. And uh, yeah, fucking take it easy, everyone. Peace.